I want to talk to you today about something that's really interesting to me. It says on the screen that we're going to talk about relative lowering of vapor pressure. So there are two things here, relative and something called lowering of vapor pressure. Let's look at the second part first. What on earth is lowering of vapor pressure? I've got a flask over here with some liquid in it. Let's say there's water in it. Let's get another flask. Let's get two of these flasks, same liquid in it. And well, there's nothing else in it. So these are pure solvents in these flasks A and B. And I'm just going to connect them with an apparatus to measure the, their vapor pressure. And this is just like a simple manometer, put some liquid in it. And if the level of the liquid is the same, then they are at the same pressure. Okay, cool. Now, the moment I add a little bit of a non-volatile solute to it. Wow, heavy words, right? Non-volatile solute. Let's say I add salt or I add sugar or I add glucose, something interesting happens. What do you mean by non-volatile? Well, water obviously is volatile, right? If I leave it out in the open, it will start evaporating. That's not going to happen to glucose or to sugar or to common salt, right? It's not going to go from solid to gas. All right. So the moment I add this, look at what happens to this thing right over here in the center, this liquid inside, yeah, the orangish liquid. You see, it kind of pushes upwards, which means that this is going down on the right hand side. This is going up. So what on earth happened here? Well, nothing here. But on this side, something interesting happened on the left hand side. Hmm, the vapor pressure reduced. And that is what we are going to take to talk about relative lowering of vapor pressure with this. Okay, but huh, this, okay, maybe this is something we observe, but how does this make sense mathematically? Why does this happen? I think you have an idea about this already. Raoult's law, this says that the vapor pressure of a solvent it depends on how much solvent is in it x over here refers to mole fraction of the solvent yeah x1 if i write x2 that would be mole fraction of the solute okay and this is something you're familiar with so lowering of vapor pressure is not a big deal but i'm making a bold statement over here i'm saying that it only depends on number of particles mm, number of particles so it doesn't matter how much water i take if I take some quantity of water and I put some quantity of salt in it, this is hard to understand. Okay, let, let's put some math around this again. Okay, so I, I've said that P1 is proportional to X1. And if you just, you know, expand this Raoult's law, I can write this the proportionality constant to be the vapor pressure of pure solvent at a particular temperature, at a temperature T, right? That's important. It's at a particular temperature. So lowering of vapor pressure, which would be say delta P, what would that look like? And for the sake of continuity, I'm going to call it P1. Yeah, P1 is because 1 represents the solvent. So delta P1 is P01 minus P1. Mm, this is again the pure thing and this is that of the solution itself. What solution? Non-volatile solute like glucose, common salt or sugar in water, which is a pure solvent. Okay, cool. I can substitute this here, can't I? This thing here, I know a lot of arrows. Try and keep up. Yeah, or if you feel that this fast, just pause, go back. Little bit of math, but it's going to be very interesting very quickly. Okay, I'm just going to erase this bit. And there you go. Look at this. Hmm. I've done a little bit of, you know, taking things together and all of that. And you'll see why I did this. This is a binary mixture. There's only one solute, one solvent. So the mole fractions are going to add up to one. Yeah, both of these. All right. So X2 would be the mole fraction of the non-volatile solute itself. Hmm. So what is X2? It's simply 1 minus X1. That's why I did all of that. So... Delta P1 is going to be equal to P1 naught times X2. Now, out of all of these, look, this is a constant, yeah, which depends on temperature. And this is something, what is this? It's a mole fraction, right? It's number of moles of something of, say, moles of 2. I'm going to write that slowly here. Divide by total moles, right? So, look at that. This one looks like it only depends on number of particles. We almost proved this, right? Lowering of vapor pressure depends only on number of particles. But there's a small catch here. Small catch. What's the catch? Look at this carefully. If I put number of particles on the right hand side, I have X2. On the LHS, I need to take delta P1 and divide it by P1 naught. So I'm going to change this definition over here on the left a little bit and say that let's talk about relative lowering of vapor pressure. Why relative? Because I am comparing the change in something divided by the original same thing, right? So that is relative uh, to this. Hmm. So this is the complete definition, okay? That relative vapor, uh, lowering of vapor pressure depends only on number of particles, X2. And I'm gonna expand that, and I'm gonna use the same nomenclature, okay? 
one is solvent two is solute on the top left corner please pay attention to that so x2 then becomes n2 number of moles of the solute divided by total number of moles and a little bit of a simplification right if and if n2 is really really small you know uh, this is something maybe you've seen this approximation. Maybe this help you solve some questions, which I am doing this little bit extra part. We've already proved what we want to do in this video. Yeah. But the practical application will be clearer when we do a couple of other properties after this. All right, back to this. So if N2 is much smaller than N1, then I can write this X2 to be simply N2 by N1 itself, right? Because this kind of just becomes really small. So we ignore it. That is why maybe sometimes you will see a different expression that we are just going to see. Uh, Something I like doing, and I think this is a good practice as well, is write down units of everything. What is N? It's the mass of the stuff that's given to you divided by the molar mass. And the units are gram and gram per mole. So gram and gram get cancelled out, moles go on top. Please cross check. It's important. Even as a teacher, I feel that I should do it. As a student, you must always do this just so you don't make any mistakes. So I'm going to use a couple of more variables, just writing them down. Small w is going to represent mass. And capital M is going to represent molar mass. These are standard things, uh, nothing to worry about here. So just substituting everything, N2 in terms of W's and M's, I'm going to write everything down. And you'll see a nice and neat expression that maybe you've seen in a book or online or while solving questions. So M, capital M are molar masses. And if I substitute all of this over here, remember, considering N2 is much smaller than N1, then I get this expression for delta P1 by P1 naught is equal to x2 and I have proved that relative lowering of vapor pressure depends only on number of particles and this is the most fascinating thing about it that's why we've been studying relative lowering of vapor pressure in the first place or RLVP hmm I'm going to end this video with one really important idea yeah that this concept that properties that depend only on number of particles they're really really special and collectively such properties are known as colligative properties. You're going to hear this a lot in this chapter solutions. Okay. And last point, really important. It's relative lowering that matters. Yeah. If you're still wondering why relative, why not just lowering vapor pressure? Why, why is it not that? Well, let's put some numbers around it. Yeah. So uh, why not just delta B? Why is that not a colligative property? Let's take example. Let's put some numbers to it. Yeah. I'm writing down, say the vapor pressure at 20 degrees Celsius and in terms of mmHg of two different liquids, pure solvents, H2O and C2H5OH, water and ethanol at 17.5 and 40. Now, if I take the same number of solute particles, say I take one mole of stuff, yeah, whatever this X2 is, one mole in some 10 moles or whatever, I fix X2, yeah, say I fix this. But this will change, this kind of obvious, if you look at it right now, okay, obviously if this is fixed and then, and this is different, then this must change. Yeah, mathematically it must. So please, yeah, delta P will be different for the same X2 values because your solvent itself is different. Okay, uh, seems obvious now because of math, but otherwise it does bug you a little bit. All right, that was it. Yeah, relative lowering of vapor pressure is a really, really cool property that only depends on the number of particles, which introduces us to colligative properties. Here's a quick formula and this only and only works if N2 is much smaller than N1. Please do this derivation a couple of times and get used to it. We'll do some cool numericals around this as well and you should practice this a lot as well.